Hi. Welcome back to my channel. Similar to my previous video on how to upload a CSV file to a PostgreSQL database, in this video, I'm utilizing Dashboard 2.0 with different steps. Let's see how it's done. First, we need to install Dashboard 2.0. Go to the Manage Palette tab, then search for Dashboard. Next, search for a node named at flowfuse slash node red dashboard. Then, click on Install. For more information about Dashboard 2.0, please visit its page on the Flow Node Red website. These are the nodes that we can use in Dashboard 2.0, mostly the same as those available in the regular Node Red Dashboard. Since I'm using a PostgreSQL database, next, I'll install the node for PostgreSQL connection. I'm using Node Red Contrib Postgrester next. Next, install Node Red Contrib Loop to execute looping commands for inserting data for each row. This is the CSV file I'll be using, consisting of columns for username, user ID, first name, and last name. Some data has already been filled in. And this is the username table existing in the database. Its fields match the columns in the CSV file, username, user ID, first name, and last name. The user ID and username are primary keys, meaning there should be no duplicate data in the table. Below is the node red flow code for the CSV upload page. We can see the pages present in Dashboard 2.0 along with groups for each page. On the Upload CSV page, there are groups for Setting Separator, Upload CSV, and CSV Table. The flow starts with an inject node to initialize the separator used in the CSV, which is a semicolon. This payload is then passed to a radio node and subsequently to a text node. The radio node is used to choose the type of separator used in the CSV file, whether it's a semicolon or a comma. For file upload, I'm using a template node and writing a script to handle the file upload process. The data in the CSV will become a payload that will then be processed by a function node to be converted into a string. Next, the payload that has been converted to a string will be sent to the CSV node. Prior to this, there is a switch node to check if the selected separator on the radio button is a semicolon or a comma. There are two CSV nodes based on the separator selected in the radio node. The data generated by the CSV node becomes an array that will then be displayed on the table node. The data processed into an array in the CSV node will be stored in the flow variable CSV. Next, there is a trigger to record CSV data using a button node. When the button is pressed, it will take the flow variable CSV as the payload. There is a function node that will store the CSV value into the dataset payload. Then, it proceeds to the loop node to perform the record process for each row in the dataset to the database table. This is the query used to record each row in the received payload dataset. After the recording process completes, there are several notification nodes. Following the insertion of all data into the database, a reset will occur on the table after 5 seconds, ensuring that the table does not display the CSV data anymore. If in the regular dashboard we use slash UI after the node red address, for dashboard 2.0, we use slash dashboard. Here is the radio button used to select the type of separator used in the CSV file to be uploaded. Let's try selecting a CSV file by clicking on the attachment icon. After selecting the CSV file, the data in the CSV will be displayed in the table. To record the data into the database, click the record to database button. 
The data will then be recorded into the PostgreSQL database, and the table will reset after 5 seconds. Let's check the database table to see if the data has been successfully recorded. We can observe that all the data from the CSV has been successfully recorded. Now, let's try uploading the same CSV file again. Will the data be recorded again, causing duplication in the table, or not? A notification appears indicating that the data already exists, preventing it from being recorded again. Below is the flow code to display all data, as well as to edit and delete data. Initially, it will query all data and use a function to create an array, which is then displayed in a table. In addition, it will fetch a list of usernames from the table, which will then be displayed in a drop-down node. This drop-down node will select one username, and then data editing and deletion will be performed based on the selected username. To modify data in the username table, I'm using a form node. Only the first name and last name variables can be updated, while username and user ID cannot be changed. From this form node, the data will be sent to the PostgreSQL node to execute the update query. To examine the detailed flow code I'm using, please download the flow code from the link provided in the video description. This way, you can try it yourself, and don't forget to follow the steps to install the required nodes. This is the page for updating the selected username's data. The data to be modified is written in the form, including first name and username. In addition to updating data, we can also perform data deletion. In conclusion, this video tutorial demonstrated the process of uploading CSV data into a PostgreSQL database using Dashboard 2.0 and Node-RED. By following the steps outlined in the video, you will learn how to set up the dashboard, select the CSV file separator, upload the file, and record its data into the database. This tutorial also covered additional functionalities such as viewing, editing, and deleting data from the database. This video aims to empower users to effectively manage their data in PostgreSQL databases using Node-RED Dashboard 2.0. Don't forget to like, and subscribe this channel. See you in the next video.